everyone. Welcome to discussion eight on left-leaning red black trees and hashing. Let's just get started with some announcements. Uh, weekly survey has already passed, but lab eight is due this Friday. Project two checkpoint was actually extended to Sunday, but don't put it off. Um, you're not gonna be able to get as much help because it won't be office hours or um, as much active ed monitoring. So try to get it in by Friday anyways, so you can still get support from staff. Um, but homework two is due next Monday as well. And that is it for announcements. So I'm actually gonna direct you to one of Anjali's videos from last semester, because again, her videos are awesome. And her video will cover um, the content review for bee trees, left leaning red, black trees and hashing. And then we'll also cover problem one in entirety. It will call, cover all of problem two, hashing. And then for problem three, you can come back to this video and we'll go over it together. So I will see you in a second. Hi, I hope you had the best time working with Anjali on problems one and two, and now we're gonna go over problem three together. So our goal is to draw a hash map after a couple operations done to it. Um, the problem also states that initially we have four buckets um, and we will resize if our load factor reaches 0.75. And recall that the load factor is just the number of items we have over the number of buckets. And if this reaches 0.75, then we resize. And we would resize by doubling the number of buckets. And so this is what we're working with. I'm also going to assume that we are doing um, some sort of like array with linked lists as the items, or in other words, we're doing external chaining. So these are the assumptions we can make going into this problem. Um, and they are stated on the full worksheet. The slide is just abbreviated. So now let's get started. We first say that we have a new hash map. And so we can assume again, we're gonna have initially four buckets. And then the first thing we do is we put hash browns. The other thing for this problem is that we've defined our hash function to take the first letter of the key string Take that as its um, place in the alphabet, for example, A is zero, B is one, et cetera, and then modulo that by the number of buckets to get the correct index. So here, as it says at the bottom, H is seven. Seven modulo four is three. Knowing this, which bucket should hash runs go in? Take a moment and think about it. So hash brown goes in bucket three because H is seven seven mod four, which is the number of buckets is three. And so we can put this in index three and it belongs here. Notice also that we currently have one item total and four buckets. So our load factor is only 0.25 and we don't have to resize yet. Next, we're gonna add dim sum. So now take a moment um, and think which bucket will dim sum belong in. And so dim sum um, as given in this a helpful little note here, D corresponds to three and three mod four is three. So we put this again in the third bucket or the um, bucket with index three, zero indexing here. And note that dim sum and hash browns are in the same bucket right now, but this is perfectly okay because with external chaining, we have this link list that supports having multiple items in a bucket, which is sort of part of the design goals of our hash map in the first place, right? And so everything is so far so good. And note that we have two items, four buckets. We have not reached our resize um, load factor yet. So we're good to keep going. So now take a moment and pause and think where is escargot going to go? So escargot starts with E and E corresponds to the fourth letter in the alphabet when you're zero indexing. So four modulo four, equals zero. So we put this in the zero index bucket. Now, take a moment and pause. Is there anything else we have to do here? If you guess that we have to resize, you're correct. We have three items, four buckets, which means our current load factor is 0.75. And we have to resize when we reach this load factor. So we're going to double the amount of buckets we have. Great. And so we have doubled the amount of buckets, but are we good to go? I think we still have to do a little bit um, more cleanup here, right? We have to rehash every item because take a moment and think about it. Escargot starts with E. 
and E is the fourth letter in the alphabet. So currently, four mod the number of items, which is now eight, equals four, which means escargot should really belong in the fourth bucket. If we did not rehash and we left escargot where it currently is, let's say the next time um, we're trying to work with our hash map, we see, oh, hm get escargot, right? And so we're gonna try to get this. And in the process of getting, we'll go, okay, if I were escargot, which bucket would I be in? Well, escargot, four mod eight is four. So we should go look in the fourth bucket and oh, escargot is not in there. So uh, it's not in our hash map when that is incorrect. That's not the behavior we want because escargot is in our hash map. The problem is just that if we didn't rehash this and left it in bucket zero, we would not be able to find it again in general because we're looking in the wrong bucket. We haven't um, correctly updated where escargot belongs. So we know that we're gonna have to rehash everything. And as I just stated, escargot should now be in bucket four. Take a moment to think about where hash browns and dim sum will be after this. Are they gonna be in the same bucket still? After rehashing, dim sum, escargot and hash browns are um, in these current spots. And so notice dim sum remained in bucket three as before where it was, but hash browns moved from bucket three to bucket seven. You can take a moment if you're confused to um, recalculate the hash codes. Now, the next thing we have to do is put brown bananas and brown bananas has a yumminess factor of one. Oh, I guess um, the slide doesn't say it, but the full worksheet describes that we're mapping food items to the yumminess. And so we've decided brown bananas only get a yumminess of one. We wanna be able to access this in constant time. So where are we gonna put this in our hash map? Brown banana starts with B. B is the first um, letter in the alphabet if we're zero indexing. And so we put it in the first or um, one index bucket. So brown bananas goes there. We haven't yet reached our load factor, so we can keep going. We add burritos and just as before, since it starts with B, we put it in the first bucket. We haven't reached our load factor, so we keep going. We're gonna add buffalo wings and take a moment to think about where it goes. And buffalo wings also starts with B, so it goes in the first bucket. Now we've reached our resize factor. This is a moment I want you to take and um, remember why do we resize in the first place? Why do we resize our hash maps? The reason is that when we have too many items in a bucket, we have to iterate through every item to find out if something is there, for example, or to add new items. And so this is super slow because we're essentially making a linked list inside the buckets. And as you recall, linked lists have linear time operations for getting a specific item or um, like iterating all the way to the back and adding them there. And so this is not super ideal. And you can imagine if we had like a thousand elements in this bucket, we would have really poor runtime because now we're essentially getting linear runtime. We don't want this. And so resizing allows us to have less items per bucket or on average, maybe only like one or two items per bucket, which means we've essentially achieved constant time, which is the whole goal of the hash map. So we need to resize to make sure we don't have too many items in any given bucket. We've reached the resize factor here, so we're gonna double the amount of items in our array. Now, as before, we should rehash everything. So take a moment and think, what moves when we rehash? Nothing. So we just resized our underlying um, array portion or the bucket portion of our hash map, but it didn't really do anything to solve the problem of this bucket having way too many items. And just to exasperate or exacerbate it, make the problem worse, um, we're adding banh mi. And so banh mi is very yummy, it gets nine, but we still have this problem of this really long linked list like structure. And so I want you to really emphasize or note that we have resized, but there's still something a little funky, right? That brings us to the next question, which I've maybe kind of already given away the answer. Do you see a potential problem here with the behavior of our hash map? You can take a moment to think about it and maybe formalize um, your thoughts. So the problem here is that our hash map has too many items in the B bucket. And specifically, 
if we add a lot of items that start with the same letter, they're all gonna end up in the same bucket. So we could add 1000 items with, that all start with B. And even though we're gonna keep resizing our hash map to fit um, and like stay below the load factor, that doesn't change the fact that we're ending up with linear runtime to get a specific item, for example. If we wanted to know, hey, how yummy is banh mi? What's the yumminess rating for banh mi? We would have to go to this bucket and iterate through the whole linked list to find it and find the associated value with that key. And you can imagine this will be worse if there are even more items. So that's the problem with the behavior of our hash map. Um, we'll just say bad runtime to sum that all up. And how can we solve this? So again, take a moment to think about it. So the way we could solve this problem would be by simply having a better hash function. You're gonna notice our hash function here was super simplistic. We just took the first letter and used that basically to do the whole thing, which means brown bananas, burritos, and buffalo wings, and bun meat, even though they're pretty different strings, all end up in the same bucket. There's not really an aspect of randomness here, and it's not really doing a good job of evenly dispersing the items. And so I want you to take away from this that without a good hash code, our hash map is kind of useless. We need an effective hash code. Writing one of those is out of the scope for this class. Um, it's actually really complicated. Um, but as long as you understand that having a good one is important, um, I think that's really the point of this little, this little exercise. And hopefully that's what you've gained from this. Um, and Java's built-in hash map or built-in string hash code is actually much, much better than this and much more complicated. If you're curious, you can go um, look into that. But yeah, writing good hash functions is definitely an important aspect. So I hope you enjoyed this worksheet and have a wonderful day. Get some rest. Good luck for midterm two and eat something yummy today. Maybe bond me. <laughs>